know, I wanted to hear them speak more. I wanted to talk to them more. And uh, Otis Amy is definitely one of those people. Uh, he's, uh, he's been able to do some super, super cool things. Uh, first thing I heard about him was uh, he played for the 49ers. And so I wanted to meet him because, honestly, and, 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 and this is how I am, I'm always trying to figure out how I can get the edge. I'm always trying to figure out how I can learn from somebody that has performed at a super high level, right? So when I heard he had played at the highest level football is able to play, I wanted to hang out with him more. It, just for the simple fact was, bro, like, how did you do that? How did you get there? How did you get yourself to perform where now somebody's going to pay you millions just to do what you do well, right? You are the best of the best. I want to talk to you a little bit, right? <laughs> No. Ain't nobody living with me. See in my delivery. Soliloquies and synonyms, man, ain't nobody ever the same. Why did it do with us? I'll stop what I'm doing this. Build with the spirit so you never see me losing this. God be the reason for the season in my wagon. Used to call me daddy, now they say it was happening. Hopping on my bandwagon because they see the God of me. But the energy you try to Jeremiah and follow me. Let me break it down, y'all. Satan try to slide me. I just quote the words, slide off and say, part of me. People that don't know me think that I won the lottery. It's the God of me, you got to be, you got to follow me. See me in the streets, yeah, I'm trying to save all of them. Used to be like them until the Lord came calling. If you got Christ, just walk like this. Forget the 25th, because God is a gift. I grew up very confused. I had my mom, who was a typical church mom, come downstairs at 6 a.m., she has her coffee, the Bible's open, she's praying, she's on her knees. I saw that, and on the other end was my dad, ex-military, construction worker. He used to put his uh, index finger on my chest, and it could make me crumble to the ground. Like that's how hard and callous this man's hands were. So he would be—he would be drunk about every other day. He would come home verbally, physically abuse my mom, but obviously her. So I grew up very confused. My dad would clown me for not messing with girls. What are you gay? You're not messing with girls? And I'd go to church with my mom, and I would hear the complete opposite thing. So I grew up very confused until I got to where I'm at today. I started getting exposed to the truth. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my story, how I became who I am. Because I look, as a young man, you look up to your dad. You want to be like your dad, but I realized, you know what, I'm gonna use, one of the things I've learned is to use every single thing as motivation. So I use the things that he's, that he t showed me as uh, the type of man that I didn't want to be. But I can tell you today, that same man is now back with my mom in Arizona, leading Bible studies, and they're back together. So only one reason that can happen. About destroying the odds. And so at the age of seven, people don't believe me when I say this. I was watching ESPN Sports Center and I pointed to the screen. I promise you, I remember like it yesterday, and I said, I'm going to play for the San Francisco 49ers. 20 minutes away from where I grew up, the age of seven. And I said, I'm also going to have a highlight on Sports Center. And the third thing, I'm going to buy my mom a house because we struggle. I remember, like it was yesterday, writing in a pencil. Anybody remember a pencil? Yes. Right. And it used to backfire, like every block. And so I used to slide down in my seats and my friends couldn't see me, like they didn't already know it was our car. <laughs> <laughs> Drop us off at school and at the movies, like <laughs> Right, so we grew up like that. I remember seeing uh, eviction notices on the door. And I just said, I promise you, Mom, I just tell this, I promise you, Mom, I'm going to win for us. I'm going to do whatever it takes to win for us. And so the first thing, I just have a few steps. I promise you, I'm not deep. Like, I'm not a deep person. I need some extravagant vocabulary. I'm just going to talk about this is what I actually did. Take it, take it or leave it. So the first thing you got to do is count the cost. And so to get to the NFL, at the age of eight, I knew this because I had mentors, I'm going to talk about that in a second, that already played. So what do these numbers represent? The million represents the number of high school kids that think they're going to play in the NFL. When I go to a school, about two to three times a week, I was at Whitney, at Granite Bay. Um, yesterday, I was at Monterey Trail. How many of you want to make it? It doesn't matter. This is the same for every sport. How many of you want to make it all the way? Who, how many of you raise your hands? All, all of them. I'm going. Okay. What do you think the chances of making it? Fifty percent. So half of you in this room are going to play professionally? No, 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 no. Now, I will never tell them they can't make it, but I'm going to be real about it. Because a lot of them, they get to struggle with their identity. A lot of us, too. Our identity. I used to think I was Otis Amy, the football player. But what happened when it was over? At the age of 29. You know, now what am I going to do? So the, the uh, million represents the number of kids that think, think they want to play. 
What does 70,000 represent? It's a triangle. The amount that play in college. No. The amount of guys that are in college that are actually capable of playing in the NFL. The amount that could play right now, could play. What is 230? The amount that you drafted. You can get drafted and not make it now. Think about that. <laughs> and then what is 110? What is 110? This is the first thing. I, I, I have this in my head. I don't need the slides. I talk about it all the time. 110 is the amount of guys that play past three years. Wow. So even if you do accomplish that dream, I live this so I can speak very passionate about it. Even if you do make it and you play for three years, you're not going to be a millionaire. Coming from Sac State, I got $10,000 signing bonus. I went from eating top ramen to making 15000 a week. That sounds like a lot, and it is to most folks. That was the league minimum. Julian Peterson was making 365000 every Wednesday as our franchise player. That was way back in 05. Now, some of these guys are making a lot of money, but the top 5% is what you see on TV. Now, what you really see going on, these guys aren't making that much money. After taxes get hit, and after all these so-called friends and cousins and everybody else gets to them, it's not really what you think it is. So the first thing you have to do in anything, you have to count the cost. Okay, now that I know this, regardless of what you're trying to do, am I still willing to move on? I said, okay, I think I can be one of those 230. I think I can do it. This is at eight years old. I think I can do it. Next thing is you have to decide. But the game of football is a brutal, vicious, violent sport. I remember the hardest time I ever got hit was the last game of the season. So it rained in the candlestick. The wind, the wind for us was already hard to catch the kickoffs. So I'm back deep in the overtime. They kick it to me. I catch it. Kickoff return, people look blocked. It looked like they're blocking to come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Right? A lot of your friends let you, that's a, that's a whole message right there. A lot of your friends let you down. So I'm going, I'm running, I think it's all good. All of a sudden, somebody comes out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm on the ground. I know that there's millions of people uh, watching on national TV. <laughs> I say, I want to stay down right now, but I can't. So I go out to sideline like this. I get on the sideline, I look, and there's a chunk of my arm missing. Mm. And I had to get eight stitches after the, after the game. So that's part of counting the cost. I know that the game's like that. But this is what I said I was going to do. God bless him with these gigantic hands, right? I'm not a big man, but God bless him with these gifts. I'm going to do it. Why? We're going to talk about the why. Any motivation speaker, Eric Thomas, whoever. Uh, Dr. Lee, they're going to talk about your why. We're going to talk about that too. But I said the most important of my goals was to buy my mama home. That was the main one. But you have to decide. This is what I'm going to do. Pesticide, right? To kill bugs. Suicide to kill yourself. Homicide to kill somebody else. Genocide to kill mass amounts of people. But what does decide mean? It's like decide means to kill off every other option. Mm. Mm. Wow. And so at the age wow. of seven, at the age of eight rather, when I made that decision, I said, you know what? I don't care what I have to endure, what I have to go through. I am going to make it to the NFL. I'm going to have a highlight of sports center, and I'm going to buy my mama a house. If I can make it on the Niners, that'd be awesome. You really have no control over what team you go to. The next thing is you have to find a mentor. And I have tons of them in here. I could say Michael Harper. I could say Dr. Lee. I could say Pluchette. I could say Deanna. I can name a whole bunch of people for different reasons, spiritual. Whatever, lots of people that speak into my life that have fruit on the tree, number one, um, but that have accomplished some things. And so for me, it was cool. Roy Williams, they actually have a horse collar rule because of him, went to the same high school as me. Two years before me, graduated, won a national championship at Oklahoma, so every single school said, we don't want you anymore. The only reason I got a full ride scholarship to Sac State, which was the only school that still wanted me, wanted me was because I had a 4.0 GPA. So I was sitting outside on the steps of my high school crying. I thought it was over. I wasn't going to be able to accomplish any of these dreams. And Roy was at the game because he was, uh, had a bye week. And he said, it was a 20-minute conversation, but all I remember was this one thing. He said, hey, man, if you can play, they'll find you. It doesn't matter what school you go to. I held on to that. I said it to every young man I go to because they all think I got to go to some big-time D1. No, no, you don't. You can go to a JUCO, play for one year, and then go from there. So I went to Sac State, never even heard of Sac State. An hour and a half away from Union City. Didn't even know I had a football team. But what I did know is that if you can play, they'll find you. I had a chance now to enter the NFL draft. But one of the biggest tests leading up to it, there's a lot of behind the scenes things that go on. Go on. The first thing is called a pro day. So that means any team that's interested in you is going to send their scouts to come check you out. 
make you run 40, make you jump. Uh, the first test is the bench press, 225 pounds. 225. And so for a receiver, if you can do it six times, that's good. That's really good. And they actually said quarterbacks and receivers, you don't even have to do it. You don't have to do it. We just want to see you run routes and catch balls. But I said at that time, I have to differentiate myself from everybody else. I'm coming from Sac State. They already probably think I don't play anybody good, right? I'm not that big of a guy. I'm not the fastest, not the smartest, not the whatever. So I say, you know what? I'm going to do it. My last name is first. I go up. Now, if you know something about NFL, super cut throw. The scouts don't talk to you. They just look at you like this with the clipboard and take notes. You do something good, there's no expression. You do something bad, there's no expression. No expression. The pin just moves. What are they writing down right now? So I said, I'm going to make him do some kind of expression to know that I did good. So I get down on the bench. If I can just do six, that would be good. I start banging it out. Keep in mind, for 15 years, at the age of seven, I said, I want to play in the NFL. I want to have a Highland Sports Center. I want to buy my mama home. It took 15 years. A lot, of, a lot of youngsters that want the microwave blessing. They want to put it in for two minutes or two weeks later. It's not there, then quit. 15 years. My own high school coach said I'm not going to make it. We heard it in the NFL draft. A lot of homies, a lot of friends of the black. Wow, Brown, you, you tripping. You're not big enough. You're not fast enough. 17, 18, 19, 20. No spotter, re it. Now, the one I looked at is this big guy from the Raiders. Looking all hard, he did. Must have been something good, right? NFL draft comes around. I'm told I'm going to get drafted in the third through the fifth round out of seven. That guarantees I'm going to be able to buy my mom a home because I'm going to get anywhere from about $300,000 to $600,000. Just a sign. So I'm excited about it. First thing goes by on Saturday, I do not get called. Instantly, I don't have that. That positive voice in my head saying, you can do it. I'm, I'm bummed out, right? I'm dejected. Second day's on Sunday. Still haven't got my name called. I said, you know what? You know what? I'm going to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> Give, I'm going to go talk to Jesus because no one else is with me right now. So I put my phone on vibrate. Sure enough, you know, I'm doing what he had us doing right here, right? I'm in church. <laughs> hands, <laughs> hands, in the, hands in the air, eyes closed, my phone vibrates. I look, this is block number. I run outside. People think I'm crazy trying to take off. I'm like, what is wrong with this? You got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I answer the phone. It's the 49ers receiver coach. Say, hey, so I'm thinking about drafting you in the sixth or seventh round. If not, we just want to come out as a free agent. So I, Heck yeah. <laughs> and so it happened three more times. The Bills, Eagles, and the Patriots saw call. I end up not getting drafted, so I'm a little bummed out about that. But I have literally five. You talk about those numbers, right? I have five minutes to decide which team I'm going to go to. The only other team, who do you think that I thought I was going to? Bills, Eagles, Patriots, 49ers. I considered the Patriots. They were good in 2005, they're still good right now. I considered them. But what was my dream? 20 minutes down the road. Made a decision to go to camp with the 49ers. I see guys that I grew up idolizing, Bryant Young. I'm like, what? Bryant <laughs> Young? I put a lot of starting on my car return. I said, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I said. So now I'm back to you. You know, Sac State, 5,000 people maybe. This is sold out. This is 9 11. First game on TV in the NFL. 64,000. My mom's there. My fiance is there. I'm back deep. And her return is the third hardest thing to do in the NFL. So number one is to play quarterback. Number two is to play island cornerback, like where you can just lock down a receiver on your own. Number three is just catching a punt. It's extremely hard to do, even at practice with just you and the punter. So I'm back deep. I'm supposed to do all these things, these checks. I'm in, in La La Land. I'm looking at my, hey, mother, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, I see in my, out of my peripheral, I see the ball in the air. I'm like, shoot. <laughs> I look up. I don't look at the long snapper or the, or the gutters. I literally say, Jesus, please just let me catch this ball. <laughs> so I'm going like this. I'm not looking at anybody running at me. Now, these are like trained killers running at me. As soon as, as, soon as I catch it, there's a guy 6'4", 260 in my face. Back of line back, I'm trying to make a point. I barely make him miss. I don't remember the rest, but if you watch it on YouTube, I made some moves. 
Next thing I know is there's a punter. I made a move on him, and next thing I know, I don't see anybody. It's just 50 yards of green grass. It doesn't even dawn on me that I might score or whatever. I am just running, and my form is terrible. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and I look back with like 20 yards left, and there's nobody around. And my teammate is going like this already. Still, still hasn't hit me. I'm just running for my life. First time ever touching the ball in the NFL. First time ever touching the field in the NFL. I cross the end zone. All of a sudden, it dawns on me like everything I've been through in my life. Like seeing my seeing my dad uh, hit my mom and me choking him out and almost killing him. My high school coach saying I ah, he's not gonna make it. Everything my homie saying, dude, why are you running around the block tonight? All those things and all I can think to do is go like this. And my teammates came and huddled around me. It was two years later. I was watching that highlight and I felt it. I heard it clear as day. God said, son, you're gonna have success because of me. You only continue to have success because of me. Think about how many pictures were submitted to the paper that day. The picture in the front page, not the sports section, of the entire paper is me going like this. He said, who do you think made that happen? Guess what else happened on the, with that play? ESPN Top 10 Countdown. Wow. <laughs> you know, as amazing, as cool, as awesome as all those things are, there's nothing I've ever done this race up there, I think number three, is, it's hard to not get emotional talking about, is going to Arizona and taking my mom to the spot um, and saying, what kind of carpet do you want? Wow. <laughs> what kind of paint do you want? Here's the keys to your home. Thank you. Yeah.